Hi everyone, I'm Liesl from Artist Palette and I'm showing you step by step how to do the holiday wreath. Um, so this is a uh, video that you can pause at any time and take your time. You are going to need just a large anything like this or just a flat large is good or even round is fine too. We're going to fill in the background and a little bit in the circle of the middle. If you have a round object like a plate or something like that, you can trace around for a perfect circle, but it's not necessary because as you can see, the wreath is imperfect with the, um, the colors and the leaves and twigs all around it. I'm going to use a lot of this medium brush, a flat square size four, and some detailed brushes. You can have two, so you can decide what to use for smaller details. Okay, so paints, yes, I'm using always primary colors, red, yellow, blue, and black and white. Closest thing to primary, um, phthalo blue, uh, bright yellow, crimson red or bright red. And just uh, water and a mixing plate. If you have a pre-mixed brown, perfect, you can just use that. So for the background, let's get the brown ready for... Um, just getting it all filled, just a little bit of a base coat. I have a good way to make it look very rustic and you can change up the colors if you want to do more of a certain color, more grays instead of browns, you can do that too. So with my large brush, let's start with brown. I'm going to take equal parts yellow and red. And then you're going to take a small little dip of black. You're going to get like a, a red orange, small little dip of black. You will get a very brown looking color. A little bit more black and then you'll get more of a chestnut brown. So I want to leave that on the side, but what I want to do is just take more white here. I know I have like a lot of colors that I can just use and um, have on the side. So I'm just going to get a little bit more white here. So I'm getting it a lot brighter. So that's what I'm going to do. I just want to get it a lot brighter. And I'm going to take some more white. Okay. More white. Here we go. Sometimes you have to wash off your brush. So I'm just gonna wash it off really quick. Because it gets a lot of paint mixed in there. And I don't want that with other sneaky colors hiding in there, anything like that. You can brighten it up as much as you like. You can even add a touch more black if you want it to be a bit more brown, grayish in color. So test it out. I'm going to test it on the bottom. That's pretty decent. I like it. I'm going to use that. And I want to make a large circle. See just how large it is. There. See, it's not perfect. That's totally fine. And now I'm just going to go up and down. Just make it really rustic. You don't have to have too much paint. You don't have to do it so thick. You can um, just fill it in like this and it just looks like <laughs> like wood, honestly. If you wanna fill it all, you can. There's so many ways to make wood um, texture on your canvas. If you're using actual wood, that's great. It's probably gonna look pretty awesome. The trick is little paint on the brush if you're trying to make it look streaky like this. If you're filling it all solid because you want it more solid, that's, uh, that's perfectly fine. Uh, but I'm just not using, see how it's not too much paint here? So there we go.
And you can do some little fillers if you want to take a little bit more white. You don't have to wash it off. You just lightly streak it. You get some little white highlights in spots that um, have some white already showing through, maybe because you have some little gaps. So you can actually just add white there, just like this. white streaks. Taking more, sometimes since there's little paint, sometimes it just takes a little bit while to fill in and get all the spots here. Okay, and last little thing I like to do is just take my dark brown again. So remember that dark brown we made in the beginning? A little touch of water, a bit more of my dark brown paint. So that was again equal parts yellow and red. Dip of black. So it's more, see how it's super dark? It's like a chestnut brown, really deep. It's good. You can, you don't have to use your large brush, but I'm just wiping some of it off. It's going to lightly just press using the flat side to get streaks. You can use the thin side if you have a flat brush and just make what looks like panels. Just endless possibilities. It can all be one wooden piece. I think I'm gonna stop. I don't, I don't wanna overdo it with the darkness, but any spots that maybe are a little bit too chunky for your liking and you just don't want it there. Just wash this off. Squeezing out the extra water and taking my light brown again, super light brown. Just adding a lot of white to it. Tone it down. Try not to keep blending it. I just want it more streaky than blended. So whenever you feel like you're done with the background, let it dry and stop touching it. No, stop touching it. Okay, and then we will move on to making our wreath. Okay, now as we go into the wreath, let's take equal parts red and yellow to make our brown again. We get orange, red, orange that is. And then you're going to take a dip of black, maybe two. It's gonna get pretty dark, which is great. And just have some saved for later. Just adding some more of my red and yellow into it. Create a bit more of the paint. There, a little bit of water. Water is gonna help make consistent strokes for our wreath. I like to start with the wood side. And I'm going to, about halfway, just do soft, rounded, curves like this, and you're just going to do a lot of them. Intertwining. It doesn't have to come from anywhere specific because you're not going to, that's the point, you can't really see it's all kind of merged together. And you don't need to go too far into your circle here. I'm trying to stay a little bit outside of it because I'm going to fill on the other side more of like a blue, um, light blue color for the sky. So stuff like that. And if you wanna do the sky first, we can do that too. So as you can see, I'm just gonna keep going, but let's just get the sky filled in quickly first with white and just a touch of blue. Just get it a light blue here. I want this side to mostly just start kind of like a C shape. 
start filling it towards the middle. Kind of looks like a moon in a way. And I'm just going to switch to a little bit smaller brush so that my big brush is not spreading everywhere. So more of a square. Touch of blue, some white here. Nice light blue again. There. And more white added on my brush to just lighten it up as I go. More white getting a lot brighter. There's still a slight bit of blue tint going through. Try to keep the other side um, pretty empty. So just uh, if you want to take your bite and just put some white there or the lightest blue ever, just kind of if you want, you can just fill in the rest of it. See how it looks pretty much white. It's got the ever so slight hint of blue right in the center. And then my brown is just going to be coming in a little bit more. And this is all going to be overlapped a bit. A little bit more blue if you want to darken up the edges too. There. Okay, now I'm just taking some more of my dark brown again. I'm just going inside just a little bit and just filling more of the circle the size that you want, ultimately. Look at all these intertwining. It's pretty awesome. Not worried about a lot of overlap. Look at all this. It's, you want it very full. You can fill it out as much as you want. You can make it thinner. Take a step back and just look at how full, I guess, or how thick you are going as you're painting this in. See, very fun. And you can have little twigs come out. So if you press really light, a little bit of water, you can have little twigs come out. Just kind of little lone ones, making it more fun. See all these little tiny ones? There. So I'm washing this off. And whenever that's done, I'm going to do a little bit of a highlight. So you're just going to add some white to your brown that you've made, but just put it on a little bit on the side. I'm trying to not, I'm trying to save some of that brown for later. You can add more yellow if you want more of a yellowy brown. Any brown that you want to do. I'm just adding some more white, basically, maybe a bit of yellow for a different shade and tone of it. Now, lightly, just go over existing pieces or make new pieces and it looks like a highlight even though it's still wet it's still going to make that highlight see throughout it's pretty cool
Do you have to do all the pieces? No, just as much highlight as you want. So I'm taking more white here with my brown. Sometimes it picks up the brown, you just have to add a little bit more so it stands out a bit, but very subtle too. And it just looks like it's you got different shades of the brown going through when it's still wet. It's kind of cool. Pretty awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna, I think that's good enough for the highlights. I like to keep it mostly dark. Yep. And then we can finish up that side with some black whenever you're ready. So you can also, if you went a bit heavy handed, you can just go around some of these highlights and just darken it up. Soften the highlight a bit. Just like that. And you can add new pieces with some black if you want to. There we go. I like it. Any other browns you want to put in, you can do it. Lighter, dark browns. Maybe a bit more red or yellow if you want to add more variety. Until you're happy with how filled up with uh, these twigs. Or maybe how thick. Sometimes you need to make it quite thick so it doesn't look too thin. It's all about balance, I think, from the other side too. When we put all of those leaves, this is going to look probably a lot thinner too. Okay. So, on to the other side. You see, we're leaving the other half for our green, and it's going to slightly overlap the brown. To make green, I like to start with equal parts of blue and yellow. There's so many greens you can make. Um, I actually have some green left over, but anyways, equal parts blue and big scoop of yellow. I don't mind if there's like red in it to it or brown because you know what? It makes a nice earthy green. You don't have to have the super vibrant green always throughout your painting. It adds variety and color. So there's a dark green, add a little bit of brown or black is fine, and it will just darken it up, not only do that, but um, make it look more realistic. Let's start, and then we'll put on uh, highlights afterwards, we'll go a bit brighter, add a bit more shadow, make it look a lot more depth. So my middle point is somewhere around here put that there like a circle with water and some paint and just lightly streak go with the flow in the direction that the circle is going little ones little short ones and then get longer towards the middle it's okay if this side is still wet because it just picks up the brown and adds to the green color Just doing little short ones on the side. Gotta start somewhere. Just all one color first. Definitely overlap your brown here. And if you need to, you can always add a touch of white to your green. Just like a little dip and I'll show you. It's not gonna get much brighter, but it acts like a medium and it will cover a bit more of your brown, just like that, if you're having transparency issues. So just fill it, a lot of it up. See, I'm just filling it in. I'm not trying to make it so thin with the lines. I just want to get a good base coat all around there. And then we'll start putting in more streaky highlights and shadow. Just make it as thick as you want to. You can wisp more on the outsides here. So you can see there's some coming in. So it's all going up this way, and then the other one's going down this way. Okay. 
you know, some little bit over here. Maybe there's like a little piece that's straggling over there. I got a little bit maybe over here. A couple wispy lines. Lightly flick with some water. You can tell I can be very messy with it and that's exactly what we want. We don't want perfect bouquets of uh, greenery. It's kind of sometimes a bit random. Washing this off. Now we can add a bit of a shadow too. So take your time, pause this if you need to, and um, we're going to take some black. I like to, this is more of my middle point, so these are all coming in this direction, deepening it up. Picks up some of the green, makes a nice dark green, even deeper. And the black is a good shadow. More towards the center, it's very nice to shadow the bunches in the center because it makes more sense when it's all bunched that way and it's deeper in color. There we go. And now to continue on, um, if you want to wait for it to dry a bit, you can. I'm just going to continue with highlights now. I waited like a minute. You can change your water if you want to wait just a minute too. Just taking yellow and white here. Any contaminated yellow and white is just fine. I don't mind it having different colors in it. Kind of welcome it. It's very impressionist style, I think. Okay, so wiping some of it off and just using a bit of water again. So let's see. Start more on the edges. Make it a bit highlighted towards the edges. Keep the centers a bit darker. See that? Nice. That's just yellow and white or contaminated yellow and white and you can see it just it still picks up all of the background colors and blends a little bit, makes different tones of the green. It's pretty cool. You should embrace all of the different colors. It doesn't have to be clean cut with the color mixing. And just a little bit towards the middle. Again, if you went heavy handed, like maybe I did like a big streak right there, I'm just gonna put some more green back over top. That's all good. So another thing you can do with the same color when you're done with this, or at the same time, you know, you can do this, just little um, yellow bits into some of the brown, just as a bit of a extra highlight, but a different color changes the tint and the tone of some of the twigs in here. Complements it, I think, with all of the yellows and stuff throughout. Um, just a little bit here. Don't need to go wild. I'm just... There. There we go. Oops. So. We have lots more going on. See, I went, just put a little streak in here, just tone that down. And if you wanna make some different greens here, uh, what I like to do, oh, here's my greens. In the same green pile that you've made, either add more blue and white white scoop of blue and you can get more of like a minty teal why not so 
So just more blue into it and some white. A little bit of water. So you can see a little bit of an addition. It's kind of nice. You can go over exist existing spots or new spots. See, there's a nice pop of color. Not there's not already a lot of it, but I'm gonna be putting in, I like just to do a lot of color. It's nice. Okay. Or any lime yellow, any greens that you want to do. So I'm just trying to see if I should fill it in a bit more. Maybe you want to have some more leaves come in. So I just do little flicks come in. Dark green again, why not? Need balance here. And maybe some black as well, like we were doing before. Whenever that is done, uh, we will move on to our next step and start making some trees and the snowman while this is drying a little bit. Okay, the way I do my trees, I like to switch to my medium and I also like to use at the same time my detailed brush. Let's start with this one, and you can switch to this at any, any point if you want to use this one the entire time, you can. This is good for getting the tops of the trees a bit more detailed and thin, because sometimes your medium brush, um, if you're a little bit heavy-handed, it can be, you know, um, a little bit too thick. I'm gonna, t I'm gonna take the same dark green that I have here, but I'm just gonna take a little bit more black and just deepen a corner a bit. Nice deep green, very earthy, foresty. There we go. Just gonna flatten that down a little bit, a little bit of water. So let's do a tree here, gap, tree, gap. Different sizes and different heights. So let's dab right down the middle and right down the middle. There, so it's starting to be a bit more leafy in the center. Now the way that I did these ones, there's so many different ways. You can do side to side. I like to angle them upwards a little bit. So right on the top, let's just do, so I'm just angling my brush. go tap 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 and sponge it on a little bit wider so they come out a little bit longer as they go down to the bottom let's do the other side go up and just keep it very short at the top so your small brush is good for that and then just make it a little bit wider as you go towards the bottom so all you have to do is just fill in the centers so they're more full with leaves and the outsides are a bit more branchy and um, spongy looking outside for the leafy look. Okay, let's do it again. Did that down the middle and I'm just trying to do this on an angle. Here we go. Light little taps and then just get a little bit longer and wider.
and a little bit at the top and then longer and wider towards the bottom. There. Simple, right? Learning to do trees in a very easy, manageable way. So I'm just gonna do my last one. You know, you can always decorate these trees more festive if you want, just keep them more wintry, uh, leave them kind of be. I'm going to do a snowy highlight afterwards, which not right now. We're going to wait for that to dry. We're going to come back to them. There. And I'll be putting my snowman right around here with the moon above. But I'm going to just wash this off and switch to my small brush. I didn't even use it for the trees. I just wanted to give you the option so that you can, you can uh, use your small brush just in case. So with my small brush, we're going to make our snowman, but I like to start with just a light blue. Remember that light blue we kind of started? You can add less white this time so it's a bit more darker and it will make your snowman stand out a bit more too. So I'm going to do a big circle here at the bottom and then not so big and then smaller at the top. There. I'll leave that and just leave that for like three seconds. In the meantime, I'm going to make a moon up here. So a C shape, quite big and then Keep it narrow on each end where it starts, thicken it up and then narrow again. I'm just gonna fill in just the one side. because so I want it to be more of like a bluish tone kind of color, it stands out. But what I do after, now you can take white, go back to the bottom and start circling it in with some white. It's going to be a base coat, so we're going to start off, it's going to look a little bit bluey, that's okay, because later when you do your second coat, it's going to be more opaque, and it's going to cover the background a lot better. So I'm just getting more white on my palette. If I can do this. Highly recommend you do not get a pump bottle. They're no fun. Okay, white. Do the same thing here. Slightly overlapping with the one below it. Just circle it in. Circle it in. I'm just gonna slightly overlap the one below and just the same at the top. There. And then, you can do the same with the moon. Take some white, just wash it off, and then just taking it on the other side and just dragging it into my blue side. Okay, it looks like you have a lot more color in there. There. I'm gonna let that snowman dry for a bit before I put a bit more white into the very centers and leaving the outsides more shaded with some blue. So it stands out, as you can see, a lot better. Pretty cool. Okay, now what I want to do is we can go back into our wreath and we can just make little bits of twigs. Twigs and start of our, um, just got some paint here, start of our berries, like our winter berries. I'm going to switch. Actually, I'm not going to really switch. I'm just going to use a small brush. A small brush is great. I'm going to use my dark brown again. Remember that dark brown equal parts yellow and red and black. So I have it still on the side because I purposely left it there. 
And now I'm just going to make little twigs. You can have them come in from the greenery. And these are kind of like where I want my berries to mostly be. They can come in from the center too, so I'm coming out here. Why not? Little twigs here, letting my brush and wrist kind of do its things. Let it be all loose, like they're very, they can snap off, they're very thin. Nice little addition. You can always add more onto this side too, if you wanted. Okay, really fun stuff. Okay, just a bit more twigs. And um, we can do our berries as well uh, as our leaves. So you can do berries first and then do leaves after. You can do leaves now. I think the leaves now are fine because you can kind of follow along your twigs and all the areas that you have your twigs already mapped out. I'm just going to take pretty much any green, I'm taking with my small brush, any green that you have and want to use. I like to stick more with the darker green. I'm just looking for my other small brush here because it's a little bit bigger. Oh, so this one. It's about a size six detailed. I don't really consider it too much of a detailed brush. So this dark green, remember we had that and mixed it with the touch of brown or black. That's what I want to use, a little bit of water. And what I'm doing is just doing little commas just like on each side of your branches and twigs. Look at all that, it's very, starting to be something. So much depth and texture in here. Out here, so you just, I'm not trying too hard. If you can do little wispy ones, a little bit longer ones, instead of pressing as hard. So this is just one color. I'm going to switch to a highlight. You can see it a little bit better too. Just up here on each side. Those little ones filling up a lot of space and having fun with it. Don't think too hard about where to place them, except pressing hard or pressing light uh, for variety. And I'll just finish up that same technique with some highlights. So just white with uh, a little bit of that blue. You can do any green. If you want to do a lime green, you can add more yellow. You want to change up the look of it. As long as there's more white, it will be a highlight and a little dip of water. So you just kind of go around. See how, like, if you want to go over top or just around it, it will highlight them. I like to mostly go around the same spots and just maybe over top a bit. Perfect. And then we can add our berries. 
Oh, you know what? I want to add a little bit more. I feel like I need to have a little bit down here. And the dark blue too. Dark green, not dark blue. That's some dark blue because it's dark green. A little bit more into the center, break up all of that grassy look. So these berries, um, just plain red. I do suggest a larger brush because, so this is something like this, doesn't matter the brush, it's just bigger. Um, you can use also the very point of your brush if you think you're confident and you can do perfect circles, but I like to just dip it in the back end and poke. See, they're decent sizes. They are very obvious. You can use smaller for smaller berries if you have a really small canvas. And even as you keep going, they get smaller anyway. I'm just going all over the place, just around my twigs, on top, on each side, wherever. Just clumping them too. You want to put a whole bunch together. See, there's a whole ton of them that I'm doing. I like to go into the center too. Make it look all clumped and bunched up in here. So you can always add more later too. Um, there's like a million of them. <laughs> I did a lot, so just add a bunch and then maybe later I'll add a bit more if I think it's necessary. So I'll just do a couple more here. There. So leave that and then when, uh, when you're done with your berries, we're going to add a snowy little highlight, so a little bit of snow onto the trees and finish up our snowman before we start with our bow. All right, now for the snow on the trees, I'm gonna use my square flat again. Just wipe it off or make sure it's clean. If you wanna change your water, I'm gonna use plain white just on the end, just kind of wipe some of it off so it's not overly coated. It's just uh, lightly coated, just use the very tip of it. Let's use the side or just straight on and just tap. Make it, let it be spongy. See, it's gonna start creating that snowy look and highlight too, right into your trees. Go towards the center, just fill it up a little bit. Voila. And the other side, lightly tap. The more, uh, I guess, white paint you put on here, the more snowy it's gonna look. I like to start off a little bit more lighter with the touch and not too much paint. Right 
Perfect. Hopefully that worked out well for you. Take a step back, look at it, admire it. Um, if you need to, we can do a second coat with our white in the snowman now. I feel like maybe you've already done it because it's so tempting to just go back over with white when things are not perfectly white. But I still have a bit of that blue showing, which is what I want, especially along the edges, as you can see. Now, as I take my small brush again, let's just make him look more alive. Um, I'm going to start with the nose, so the orange nose, the carrot nose. Let's take a big scoop of yellow, a little touch of red, you will get orange. You can add a little touch of white, you get a bright orange. <laughs> Voila, you have orange. Just a little bit of white will co uh, cover the background just a bit and Make it more, I think, opaque. Let's go right in the middle. On the side, a little curl up. There. We got our nose. Try not to do the Pinocchio nose, though. But anyways, it's a carrot. It's supposed to be fairly long. So now it looks like he's kind of looking that way a little bit more. And let's do our brown again. I'm going to take my dark brown. You can also just take black for all of these steps, by the way. When we do the arms, the buttons, and the hat, and the eyes, and the mouth, everything. Um, so on this side, I'm just going to go right on the edge and then just do... Whoop, see how it looks like it has a bit bend? You don't have to do the bend, you can just do a straight stick. Sticks are random and maybe just a couple of random edges, lines coming out for a, like the branches for the hands. And right in here, I'm gonna start and just come straight out. Make it a little bit thicker. See how it's going into the body because of the angle that he is. Little flicks. And you can just make it a little bit thicker too. It doesn't have to be like super paper thin. Oh, so cute, okay black washed it off just taking black top hat just cutting off the very top you can always bring it down more later just going outside just do a rectangle coming outside the width of the head and then just right inside another rectangle just leaving a little bit of the edge hanging out. And just fill it in, of course. Okay, taking more black. Let's do the eyes placement for the angle that he's on. Do one eye here. And then run just right above that little carrot spot. So now he's got that angle on the face. It's perfect. Same with the mouth. Just come out just down the edge of the eye. Dot, dot. And then get a little bit closer together towards the other side. And the buttons right here along the middle where the nose is. And just get a little bit bigger towards the bottom. You can do four, three, whatever you want to do. There we go. Hopefully that was easy to do. And it, you know, if you did a snowman just looking straight on, it's just as fine. So if you need to touch up with any white, anything like that, you can, but I like to touch up with some blue. So blue, light blue on my brush. If you have a dark blue, just add some white. If it's already light, just leave it as is. I'm gonna just bring in some blue along this side. So this is my right side. And it creates a bit more of like a shadow on the right side for the whole, makes him look like, you know, he's definitely angled 
looking towards the left a lot more. And I like to balance it with some white again, just in case we did a little too much. Just round it out, make it very circular. Awesome. Okay. Now the next thing, just take a little pause. Um, the next thing that we can do is we can actually start our bow on the bottom and then we'll finish up with snow so the snow along in here some in the sky and uh that should be yeah that should be it we're almost there where is my <clears throat> okay so i'm going to use my detailed kind of larger detailed brush Um, I'm going to start with just a hot pink white and with a big scoop of red. So see how hot pink it is now? If you really don't like pink, just add a little bit of yellow. It will make it more coral looking. Hot pink, just a touch of white, keep it more red looking. <clears throat> So for the bow, let's try to keep it centered. And I'm just going to start right here. Just start with that middle oval shape and just a little bit of a curl on the bottom for where we're going to wrap around. So it's going to be just a slightly circular, sorry, rounded. Don't make a circle. Just going like it's wrapping in a circle motion, like it's wrapping around your wreath. Okay, and then we're going to make bow come out here. So round on the top, and then a second piece right here on the bottom. Just a little bit smaller one. See they're, they're like scrunched look. We're gonna make it look more scrunched. Okay, right here again. And a second, see it's just gonna cover over top. That's fine. So just fill it in. It's all kind of blobby right now, don't worry. So it acts like a medium, it covers your background a lot better too. And just make it to your liking. Um, if you need to make anything a little bit bigger, you can. And it looks like a butterfly really filled in. Anyways, right in the center, let's just do these, it's like almost like brackets coming right down. And then there's a second part on each side coming out a little bit further. Just like that. And I'm going to make it a little bit thicker. So you want to have like a little bit of like a triangle dip, it all curved in. So it looks like it has a bit more um, just dimension to it instead of just one string coming down. A little bit pointed at the end and then just another little point on the other side. Okay. 
wash this off. So we're gonna let that sit and dry for a minute. So uh, just let this dry and we'll come back whenever you're ready, when you think it's a bit more dry. It doesn't have to be like fully dry. It can just be mostly dry. We're gonna be putting a shadow and then we're gonna put actual more red into it. Okay, my bow is almost dry, so that's perfect. Let's darken it up uh, with some shadows and make it a bit more red. Just make sure you have enough red. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit more red here. And the first thing that I start with is black. Take a little bit of water with my same smaller brush. Start with black. Just trust me. Should work. Should work. <laughs> okay, I'm going to outline this little area in the middle. Just kind of round it out at the top. Very pointed at the bottom. Kind of like a raindrop in a way, but upside down. And then just slightly just do a couple streaks outlining this crease right here for the bottom and top of the bow where it's wrapped around. And then you want to work fairly fast here. A little bit of water again. I'm just going to do some flicks streaking out for the crease and the, the scrunched up look towards the center. There we go. And same with down here. A little crease down here between there. Down here, a couple creases here and towards the center. Dividing these kind of lines here. I know it looks kind of silly right now, but it's getting there. Okay, so while this is still wet, perfect. You can have a bit more of an outline. I'm gonna wash this off. Take plain red. And it's going to just start outside and you can pick up some of that black. And now it's gonna make it more red, opaque, and blend into your black. So it's a bit smoother and blended. There we go. You just go right over the black. Let it pick up that black. Same with the middle. Hold it down. If you have to wash off your brush because maybe you picked up a lot of it, you can. Just go right over top of this black here. Just let it spread and blend with it. Nice, more red, just like the red. See, this is, while it's still wet, it just does a really nice job just blending it, making it smooth together. You can pull it out from the center again, just in case you want it more streaky there. Awesome. Okay. Looks great. Uh, I'm going to take just a little bit more black here. And if you want to do any touch ups with the black streaks, you can actually just add some more in, especially from the center. There's a couple of these down here if you need to. Outlining this bottom part. That's essentially it. I'm trying to just leave that alone. And then, uh, very shortly, we'll add a highlight in there. So again, I'm just gonna let the dry, we're gonna add highlights, it's really gonna pop it out. It's going to make it a lot more shiny, I think. <laughs> and uh, we'll come back to that when it's a bit more dry. In the meantime, I like to add 
white snow into my wreath up top. Let's just take, it's the same technique I did down here. So use the very tip of your medium brush and just dab in between some of your greenery, pretty much anywhere, just random places in the center. Follow your twigs or certain leaves. I like to bunch them together. Not just random and sporadic all over the place, just a little bit more following a certain line. Like there's following a certain crease in the wreath. There. There. I think that's good. Maybe a little bit more up here. And you can always add more berries, like bigger berries. So if you're, I think that these berries are, there's a lot, but there's not quite enough big ones. So I'm just gonna take some more red and just circle on top of existing ones to make some bigger. And you can see they stand out a little bit more too. Okay, great. Now you can see them a little bit better. Okay. So I'm just touching up little leaves with some really dark green, much more black, just around the berries. I feel like that deep shadow, kind of like how you're doing in the center, really just pops of this area out a little bit more. Don't force it if you have enough though, if you're good with it. No need to do it if you are happy with what you have. And just maybe a little bit of green right here. Couple more red ones just up here. Bigger ones, that is. Really blobbing it on. All right. So whenever you're ready, we can start putting the highlights in here. I'm going to, depends on uh, how big you want your highlights to be. I'm just going to keep using this one. I've just washed it off taking white and it's still a little bit wet, but if it's completely dry, you can take a light pink. First, let's start with some white. So you can have like white highlights. See how it makes a little bit of a pink color too, so it's not just straight white. I like to go around the edges, make go in between some of the creases, like above the black a bit. So you can also add a little bit of white to your red if it's completely dry. And a little bit in here. Yeah, just a nice little highlight. Okay. 
very shiny. And a couple streaks in here. Pull it back, see what it needs. Here's some pink, just a light pink, red with some white. And you can always just do this instead. It kind of looks the same when I just did it with the white too. So that's perfect. Looks more bright and stands out. creases and towards the center see how it brings out some of that anything that is a little bit too much you're like okay I did a lot I don't want all of this white just take red again and go over anything that you want to tone down you can get just more softer highlights with this we'll just go over some red here keep it a little bit softer So if you're looking uh, to, when it's dry, if you want to, take a little dot of red, or sorry, a little dot of black and a scoop of red, and you can deepen up your red for more of a wine color, and you'll get a more deeper red, just in case it's still too pink. So when it's dry, you can go back over and just deepen up some dark, make some dark red spots throughout your bow. And it's more of a, it's just less pink deepens it. And I'll just add some little dots of some white here. A little bit more of a shine. Okay, I'm gonna stop playing around with that. I'm just gonna leave it. <clears throat> so one of the um, the other things is snow in here in this section right here the back end of your brush and just kind of dot everywhere see how I'm just letting it be everywhere on top of the trees in the background and you can do um, just going into this blue area you can see them a bit better too you can do with your small brush white um, pick a spot and just do a couple like little crosses and uh, shiny spots for the snowflakes or they could be a star in a way so they like right here just like cross it just do little flicks of lines like a star anyways I'm just gonna dab snow in there okay so at this point uh, that's pretty much it if you have anything else that you need to do touch up wise sometimes you see things you didn't notice before you can add more snow into your wreath you can put darkness back in to the wreath you can put more streaks of like black or dark green if you feel like it's not contrasted enough for you I'm just streaking in some dark green here maybe you want more snow after you've done this maybe I'll just take a little bit more of my white you can dab in more snow you can use your small brush too just to dot it in As a last little touch, 
white dot white onto your berries not every single one of them not necessary that's I mean there's probably you have like hundreds of them right lots of berries so just little dots kind of mostly the big ones I think are good just add a little bit of a highlight on some shiny berries Okay, that is it. Thanks for joining me and hopefully this was enjoyable. Um, you didn't have to paint as fast as I did. If you took your time, great. But you can pause this and if you want to paint this again, we're going to keep this up forever. You can add additions. I'd love to see results. Um, all of the unique paintings that are out there um, of my original artwork here. So I'd love to see them and you can always paint with us again if you want to. You can check out our events page on Facebook or subscribe on YouTube. We have lots of free ones. We keep most of them on YouTube, uh, keeping our Facebook a little bit more decluttered. And we also have Zoom events if you want to join us on Zoom uh, at artistpaletterm.com. We'd love to see you there. You can keep the recordings for our Zoom events forever too. You get your own pre-recording just like this. Uh, for our Zoom events. Uh, Zoom events. <laughs> so thanks for joining. Have a great day.